Welcome guys and girls to another lecture on step functions. In this lecture, we are going to learn about uh, nested step functions or nested workflows. Sometimes you will have a common workflow which you need to execute for multiple scenarios. Let's say you have this common workflow in your uh, application and it executes some common step function uh, steps, okay? So you can call this step function from other step functions. So let's say you have this step function one and then one of the step from this step function one can execute common step function and then it proceed to other steps. Uh, similarly, to illustrate the point that more than one step function can call this common workflow, I put another diagram of step function two uh, that can also execute the common step function and then more steps happen. So the advantage is if you have some common step that you need to execute for uh, more than one step functions, you can create a separate step functions uh, and then call this common step function from other step functions. So what does that buy you? So in case anything changes on that common step functions, you don't have to go change every step functions you have. You can just change this uh, common step function and that's it. And another interesting point to keep in mind is a standard workflow can call express workflow and vice versa. So there is one uh, tricky thing about uh, nested workflows. So let's say step function one is calling this common workflow, but the behavior will depend on how you call it. So by the default call, let's say you just call these step functions. What's gonna happen is the step function one will call this common workflow and it is not going to wait for this common step function to finish and it will proceed. Uh, so if your subsequent states like this more states depend on the output from this common workflow, you have to call this common workflow in a synchronous way. So I'm showing the syntax here. So you can see the type is task and resource says states start execution, which means you are trying to call another step function. But this dot sync colon two means, okay, execute this common workflow, but step function one will wait till this execute common step function step is done. If you don't put this dot sync colon two, it is just gonna fire this common workflow and then proceed. So this workflow might fail, but this step function will keep on executing. Actually with that note, uh, let's jump into a demo and I'm gonna show you guys and girls how to do nested workflows. Uh, so I'm showing two step functions side by side. On the right, we have a step functions which executing this step called uh, validate account. And then on the left, we have another step function which is calling this validate account. Uh, so you can see the first step is execute validate account. And then depending on the output from this uh, validate account step functions, uh, if it is successful, it's going to successful return state. If it is not successful, it's going to error state and then it's going to next state and then it's ending. So let's go over the code for this validate account. It is just calling a Lambda. So I know in real world scenario, a step function will have more than one step, not just one lambda, but ignore the fact. I'm just trying to show you how nested workflow works. And then if I open this lambda, so this is the lambda, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's expecting a field called account number in the event, and then it checks if the number of digits in the account number is eight. Uh, so this is a pretty common scenario in financial institution. Uh, when you uh, do some financial operations, it always goes and checks if the account number is valid or not. And before it actually goes, checks into the database, it checks, hey, does it have 10 bytes, 12 bytes? Does it start with this one zero or something? So those of you who work in bank, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so anyway, uh, so in the if, it's checking if the account number length is eight digits. If yes, it's returning status code 200, which we assume is the good status code, uh, else it returns status code 400. So if I uh, run a test case in the Lambda, so I'm passing nine bytes. So if I test this, uh, so it's sending status code 400, which is not good account number format. And if I go configure test event, remove one digit, click save. 
test it again, status got 200. Uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, going back to uh, step functions. So on the left, we are calling the validate account step. Uh, so let me show you guys and girls the step function code. So let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, start at execute validate account. Type is task. Uh, resource is start execution dot sync colon two. Uh, remember, we mentioned that if you want this step function to wait till this execute validate account is done, uh, you have to put sync, else this is gonna keep going forward. It's actually gonna fail, the choice state is gonna fail uh, because it is not gonna have the fields in the output. And then inside parameters, under state machine ARN, you give the ARN of the other step function that you are trying to call. So in this case, this is the ARN for the validate account. All right, and I'm passing the input. Uh, so I'm assuming that in the step function input, we'll have a field called account number, and I'm picking up that field and passing it to the way the Lambda is expecting, uh, account no dot dollar. Uh, so I just wanted to show how you format the input in the step function as well in the same demo. And next is the choice state. And what it's doing is uh, it's going and checking a field called output and under that output a field called status code. So let me show you how this validate account will give the output. So if I click executions, okay, let me click one of the executions that I did beforehand. Okay, so see the input, uh, because the way we are formatting the input, it's getting account number and the output will come back as status code. Uh, so I'm reading from $.output.status code. Uh, so if it is 200, I'm going to successful return state. Uh, if it is 400, I'm going to error state, else default default state. And then I'm not really doing anything on the success on the error. I just wanted to show the nested workflow. Another quick note, the IAM role for the main step function needs to have the policy to call other step functions and also needs to have access to CloudWatch events. Uh, so if I click this IAM role, you can see I have attached CloudWatch full access and AWS step functions full access to it. Okay, so let's execute this. Uh, let's click new execution. Okay, we'll pass eight digits. So we expect it go to the successful execution side. Okay, now see, this is blue and it is not progressing. So basically this step function is waiting uh, till the validate account step function is finished. Okay, here we go. Uh, so it went to choice state and then it went to successful return state. Uh, because we got a return code 200 back. And then to show that it's working appropriately, so I'm gonna make this uh, nine bytes again, click start execution. So now it should go to the error state. All right, as predicted. Uh, so one takeaway is that you guys and girls should remember is when you invoke the other step functions, make sure you invoke it in a synchronous fashion. If you remove this, it is not gonna work. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. Uh, also, check out my courses in Udemy if interested. There's a big Black Friday sale going on uh, for videos like this and many other serverless topics. Check out my serverless course where we go deep into different serverless components uh, along with all the newest features. And I keep all my courses up to date. Also, if you are looking into getting into Kubernetes with EKS, Fargate, and DevOps, uh, check out my highest rated uh, course in this area uh, in Udemy. Uh, so if you are someone who is trying to get into Kubernetes but find that the concepts are complex, I highly recommend uh, checking out uh, this course. Uh, also, I have another course on CloudFormation, CDK with DevOps and interview guide. I'll put the links to these courses in the description. So if you're interested, uh, please check them out. It helps me uh, support this channel and my other teaching activities. Uh, all right, that's all for today. Uh, have a great day. Keep rocking cloud. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.